What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me for another Pro Tips. This is going to be such a fun one because it's one of my absolute favorite things to talk about when it comes to painting in Photoshop, and that's emulating watercolor. I can't tell you how many times since, I don't know, 10 years ago, I've had people come up to me and say, how do you make it look like watercolors in Photoshop? Because you can't keep the paint wet. Now, those of you out there who use Adobe Fresco know that we have those amazing watercolor brushes where you put some paint down and you can continue mixing and playing with it and it will stay wet for eternity if that's what you want. But you know that in Photoshop, the moment you make a mark, that mark is permanent and nothing's gonna happen in terms of it being able to blend or change down the road. So how do you then emulate a wet medium? like watercolor. Well, don't worry about it. There are a lot of really cool, simple tricks you can use, mainly depending on the brushes that you choose to work with. And that really is an easy thing because once you've got the right brush set, you're gonna be in good shape. The second thing is learning how to blend colors in a way that kind of feels watercolory, if you will. This is also very simple and I'll show you how to do that. There is the element of paper texture, which goes a long way in really convincing people that what you've got is a watercolor piece if that's what you're into. And there are, of course, blending modes you can use with any paper texture you want to achieve that, as well as the fact that brushes have paper textures built into them, which also adds to the fun. And then, of course, there's the ability to control your edges. Now, if you've done any work with watercolor, you know that you have hard edges, okay, when you're painting wet onto dry, wet onto dry paper, right? You have soft edges, whether the paint is uh, wet and the, and the paper is wet, so that you're going to have um, edges where the paint will move on the paper and create a softer edge, all right, on that soft, uh, wet, uh, sorry, pardon me, on the wet paper. Um, but you also have these techniques where you have to have a variegated wash, okay, where you're going from one color to another, or a graded, a graded wash where you're going from dark to light using the same color by adding water and softening that transition. All of these things can be done, believe it or not, in Photoshop if you know how. So today we're going to cover all of that in a mere 25 minutes or so, and that's the remaining of the show. And uh, I think you'll come away from this feeling really confident about your ability to emulate watercolor right here in Photoshop. Before we jump over to Photoshop, I just want to quickly say hi to some folks in the chat. So let's see here. I'll refresh my page and see who has decided to join us today over here on Behance. If you're watching on Behance, okay, it's be.net slash live or behance.net slash live. You have to sign in with your Adobe ID and then you'll be able to join the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, you can of course make comments as well, except that I'm not following the live chat on YouTube. So just be aware of that. Head on over to Behance if you wanna join in. All right, let's say hi to Wade. What's up, Wade? Thanks for joining us. Wade, another very awesome artist who's always here on Adobe Live. Arshia, hi, Umicorn and Robert. And I see Cryo as well. And Jack, what's up, Jack? Nice to see you, Penny. How you doing, Oliver? Um, am I missing anybody? I see Steve and Clever. What's up, what's up, what's up? Um, some of you folks, I recognize your names and I know that you've probably seen some of the watercolor demos before, so this would be a good refresher for you. Abdullahi, thank you for joining. And Laurence, nice to see you as well. All right, let's jump into Photoshop and let's make some magic. You'll see here, um, just in the first uh, few minutes, right before we went live, I decided to go ahead and warm up and do this little piece right here. Um, certainly not gonna win me any awards, but this is all done in Photoshop using brushes and using all the techniques that I just mentioned. Very, very simple, okay? We've got some edges that are a little softer, like this right here, right? You've got some harder edges. You've got some edges like this, all right? Nice and crisp, and you've even got a darker edge, right, to that area of the paint, which is something that happens with watercolor, where the wet, um, the wetness of the of the paint is getting, is pushing the pigment out to the edges of the area that you paint on the dry paper. And when it dries, it dries a little bit darker. Very cool effect, easy to achieve, thanks to the brushes. Um, you see some nice paper texture coming through. All that's happening really with just brushes here. So we're gonna first talk about the brushes you wanna use. And what are they? Well, good news, they're called watercolor brushes. They're pretty easy to find. And I have them loaded right here, Kyle Real Watercolor. Now, if you wanna grab these brushes, don't worry. It's as simple as jumping over here to the menu in your brushes panel and heading to get more brushes. And that's going to launch a browser with a sign-in page. And on that sign-in page, you're gonna use your credentials there to sign in just like this. You will see that you sign in to download 
And then you're going to get the mother load of brushes created by this little guy right here. Okay, and the watercolor brush set is the one you want to go for. So if you grab the watercolor brushes, it's about, I want to say 140 brushes, something in that vicinity. It's a lot. You're going to download them and here they all are in their glory. Look at this long list of tools you've got to choose from here. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to spend the next 30 minutes trying to cover all these brushes at once. What I will do is touch on the different kinds of brushes and what they do, and then you'll be able to go from there and figure it out. So most of the watercolor brushes that are in the set have behaviors that are similar to the first few brushes you will find right here. The real watercolor two, three, four, five, six. These are kind of like the base, if you will. And the way they work is, if I were to select, for example, this um, watercolor 80 irregular edge right there. Uh, if I paint with it using medium to light pressure, okay, you'll see that as I paint, what I get are these little areas where it's slightly darker pushing out towards the edge, a little bit of paper texture there as well, okay? If I bear down with more pressure, it's slightly darker and I get a darker edge as well. Now the key to using watercolor in Photoshop is you kind of want to think in terms of shapes at first. So if you're thinking about an area that if you were using traditional watercolor, you would fill with a wash, so to speak. You want to think about that shape and then paint it all in one go. All right, so for example, let's say that I had a shape that was kind of like an hourglass. I would say, all right, here we go. I'm gonna think about that shape and kind of draw, if you will, the outline of it. And then without picking up my brush, just keep painting to fill in the area in the middle. Varying the pressure here and there as I go to create these sort of interesting areas where it's slightly darker, slightly lighter. And then I get that nice shape like that. Now, one of the things I love to do with the watercolors is after I've painted an area, I like to then just in a few spots, do stuff like this, just kind of paint a little random shape with medium tech, uh, medium pressure, just like that. Now, why would I do that? Well, what you're doing is you're adding a bit more personality, a bit more character to the interior of that area that you've just painted, that shape that you've just painted to make it even more like watercolor because the watercolors normally, if you're painting with them, they don't dry with exactly the same opacity, with exactly the same um, darkness or lightness value. Um, and you'll get these cool things happening like this where you'll get a little bit of variety in there. And so you can just manually add that, okay? And I'll show you a bit more on that later because if you see here, I've got some different colors mixed into this person's shirt, um, some darker areas here and there and these random shapes. All of that is done by taking a shape that you've sort of set as your base shape for whatever you're painting and then selecting different brushes and painting on top. Look at this, for example. What if I were to pop on down to where we have some spatter brushes right here? All right, like this spatter versa brush. If I paint with that, you'll see what it does, okay? Makes all kinds of nice spattery goodness. If you were to take that and just do this, just, just paint on top of this shape that you've just made, that automatically just makes it more interesting, more textured, more rich. So this is a technique you can use after you've sort of set up the base for what it is you're painting. All right, so heading back for a moment to these brushes, they are all very similar, okay? But of course, they are also unique. Um, for example, if I use this watercolor two, just paint a square right here, you'll notice that the edge is different from this one. This one is a little bumpier, a little more modeled, if you will. And this one is a little cleaner. So what you do is you go through and find the brushes that you feel best kind of work with what it is you're trying to achieve for the particular area of the painting that you're doing, okay? Grab another color and you'll see what happens. Most of these brushes have a mode for blending set to multiply. What that means is, I'll paint over here to the side with the same brush. If the colors aren't touching one another, they're gonna look like what you would expect. But if I overlap like this, you'll see that they are in fact transparent and the area where you have painted over the pre-existing color is going to mix the two colors with transparency to create a darker area. In this case, it's gonna be sort of a violet because you have blue and red. Now, this is really, really handy for the times when you want to have a transparent effect with the painting, but I have to tell you that this is not always what you want. And so if that's the case, um, what you want to do is you actually want to be able to blend together 
uh, the two colors. So how do you do that? Well, this is where your smudge tool comes in handy. Now, if you've never used the smudge tool before, uh, don't worry about it. That's not important. Um, sorry, I just lost the chat because Behance wants me to sign in for some reason. I don't know why. Hold on a moment. Let me just grab this and we'll kick it back. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. I've never had it happen where it just demands and gets all bossy and says I have to um, sign in. So, well, I can't see the chat right now, but I'll come back to that in a moment. All right, so um, when it comes to blending, all right, you want to use your smudge tool. The smudge tool normally, okay, is going to take anything that you've got on the on the canvas, and it's going to take the pixels and just push them around. Now, that's not exactly what you want if you're trying to create a soft effect like watercolor, but because the smudge tool can be customized, just like the brush tool, you can actually sort of cheat it into behaving more like something that creates a softer effect for watercolor. Now, the good news is you do not have to create your own because there are built-in smudge tools in the watercolor brush set that you download. So if you just head on down to the bottom of that brush set, all the way down here, you'll find one, two, three, four, five of these tools that are smudge tools. You know they're smudge tools because there is a little finger right there. So this is a brush. This is a smudge tool. Looks like somebody doing this, okay? smudging things around with their finger. Now, if I were to take, for example, this softer wet blender and just come over here and gently push around where these overlapping areas are here, you can see the edges. You see that softens that up and I get more of a blend of the two colors. But you'll also notice that there's something missing from the end result and that is the paper texture. And one of the things that makes these so convincing and so enjoyable to paint with is that built-in paper texture. So what's the solution? Well, we've thought of everything, folks. Look over here. If I go up to the Real Watercolor Add Paper Texture Brush, yes, there is such a thing, I can select that brush. And then what I like to do is select a color kind of in the middle between the two by using my eyedropper tool. And I'm holding down my Alt key or Option key if you're on a Mac to do that, it temporarily calls up the eyedropper tool. Another thing you can do is hold down the I key, the letter I, same thing. When you let go, you're back to your brush. Now, what I've done is I've selected this color here. You can see it right there. And that's sort of a color in between the middle. And look, I just gently paint over that with that paper texture. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if that's too dark, what do you do? Undo, select a lighter color, do the same thing and just paint over it. And another thing you can do is this. Go ahead and revert back to the brush that you were using to create the shapes in the first place. And for example, um, I think I was using the watercolor uh, two right there, there. Select the color that you have blended with and paint with that right there in that area. And that'll also add a bit more of the texture. Just make sure that as you come out to the edges, like I'm doing here, I'm using exceptionally light pressure and I'm doing, if you can see this sort of light circular motion, okay? And what that does is it puts a little color down, but then it removes the hard edge from it all in the same stroke. There's a knack to it that you will get very, very quickly and you'll be able to then create these nice blended areas that you see here. So this eliminates the need to be concerned about having to add to a shape and then be worried about the fact that you now have that hard edge that distinguishes one shape from another. Now you can take uh, one color, add to a shape, blend, and not be too concerned. So let's do that right now. This is a really, really important technique to get comfortable with. If I go to this watercolor 2017 basic brush, and we'll paint a little circle here like this. Very nice. This is a good brush for just getting a general kind of watercolor -y look, right? I'll do what I did before. I'll add a little bit of goodness right there. Just kind of scrub around a little bit. Make it just a little irregular here and there, whatever. Okay, there's my little shape. Now let's decide, oh, I want to have um, this added to it. 
Uh oh, but now I've just made this really super dark area. So I'll just darken a little bit over here towards the edge. And now over here, I'll use my smudge tool. So I'll tap over here on the smudge tool. It'll call up the most recently used smudge tool. And I'll just tap in a few spots here to soften up that transition like so. There we go. And then I can either use the same brush as before, grab the lighter color and just kind of paint over that like so. And that works quite nicely. Or I can go to that add paper texture brush right there, grab a light color and look at that. I can just add some paper texture right there as well. Now, sometimes you want to be able to create a shape in a um, subtractive way. Okay. This is really hard to do with traditional media on paper. You can't exactly erase watercolor very easily, but because we're in a digital environment, no problem, right? So how do you do it? Well, you got to use the right kind of eraser. And once again, we have you covered. If you look over here at the very top of the list, there is this Kyle's eraser watercolor eraser edge. Very nice. Now, if I use that eraser, see this? I can carve this shape and get more specific. And the edge quality right there looks very natural and fits in nicely with what I've been doing. All right, so that I can actually do a positive, negative, additive, subtractive kind of process if I wanna get really picky and precise with the shapes that I paint. Now, if you feel like the edge is a little too perfect, remember you do have access to your smudge tool. So you can go to the smudge tool and then here and there, soften it up a little bit add a little area that just kind of jumps out and doesn't feel quite so precise, right? And then you can create something like that, which is really fun. You can also go back to your brush that you were using, right? This 2017 basic. And I can just paint a little bit along the edge there and get that a little less perfect as well. So all the stuff that you're doing is combining these tools, the eraser, the specific brush that you want, the add paper texture brush, and of course the smudge tool to create everything you need. And that is how you arrive at something like this. All right, now those are the basics, okay? So you could just scroll on through here and try these different brushes. For example, the diluted brush. You'll notice that's, well, very diluted, big surprise, right? So I've even got, the, if I use a really dark color, let's select something like this. If I paint with the diluted brush, you'll see what happens. A lot of paper texture, the edges get a little darker, but the interior is extremely light. This is really good for doing things like what I said before. If I have this color here, okay, and I decide I wanna add some interesting stuff on the interior, I can use this brush to just kind of paint a few bits and pieces through there and subtly make it a little different from what it was. You also have, just move on down here, these natural edge painters. The natural edge painters are really, really good for basic watercolor painting. And notice that as I paint, okay, like this, I'm not lifting up the brush, but if I go lightly over an area, see this, that already has a dark edge, painting lightly over it removes that edge. So let's do another line. There's that dark edge. I could keep it, but if I wanna get rid of it, I don't lift up the stylus. I just lightly move back over that same area. So there's an interesting knack there where you learn to paint shapes. And if you want to keep the dark edge, you move more towards the interior to finish out the shape. But if you want to get rid of it, paint the same shape and do that again. Watch this. Paint that same shape, paint the interior, and then move out towards the edge and lightly touch up. And look at the difference. This one has the dark edge. This one doesn't all with the same brush did not lift up the stylus and went back over the edges with light pressure. All right, now, if you wanna take that to an extreme degree, that amount of control, head on down to where the amazing brushes are, W-A-M-A-Z-I-N-G, down here. Bunch of amazing brushes, okay? The amazing brushes will allow you to do something like this, paint a shape. Now, I'm not gonna lift the stylus, but I'm just gonna gently scrub over here and keep on scrubbing and keep on scrubbing and keep on scrubbing and keep on scrubbing. See what's happening? It literally erases the paint as you go. Even though you've just put it down, you can erase it away using light pressure. 
this is a really cool thing because you can do additive and subtractive painting in one stroke to a really extreme degree where you can go from full on color applied to the canvas to actually removing it, but retaining some nice paper texture and detail there. Uh, the artist Christoph Niemann does some fantastic stuff with this for some of his prints. I wish I could draw and paint the way he does. He's one of my uh, favorite artists out here on planet Earth. But go and uh, check out what he's done. He did a New Yorker cover for um, US Open of a person serving, where you can clearly see the evidence of the use of these brushes. And the way he does it is really great, combining shapes, using a little bit of additive, subtractive stuff in there. Very exciting, looks fantastic. All right, so let's try something else. Now, there are times when you want to be able to blend from one color to another. You want it to be really, really soft, and you want to do it like you would do with natural watercolors with, um, uh, if you use a wet paper, damp paper, and you do a variegated wash from one color to another, and while the paper is wet and while you've got the wet paint down there, you start painting another color into it, and it creates a really beautiful transition, okay? How would you do that in Photoshop? Well, let me show you. Let's go over here. There is a section here, Color Magic, okay? And you'll see four brushes in that section right there. We're going to use this Color Magic 2K17 variant brush. Now, the way this brush works is you can load the brush with two colors, all right? Your foreground color and your background color. So we'll head on over here, and for the foreground color, we'll use a nice bright blue like this. And then I'll tap on the background color, and we'll use a cool sort of pinkish red color like that. Now, here we go. I'm going to start painting, okay? And then I'm going to use light pressure as I carry on down the canvas, like so. See what happened? We went from a blue color to a very faint version of that background color, okay? And this is because the pressure is controlling not just the color that comes through, in this case, more of the background color, okay? But also the opacity. So you can do some really amazing sort of mixes of color like this in one area using this brush. But there are times when you're gonna want the color to be rich, both for the foreground and the background, all the way through the blend. Here's what you do. You open your brush settings, and under transfer, which is controlling the opacity of the paint based on the pen pressure you're using, instead of having it set to a minimum of zero right here, just bump it up to something like 70%, and do the same thing with your flow setting, maybe like 50. Now if I use light pressure, look how much more color I'm getting, okay? And I still get that nice paper texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use heavy pressure here and then just gently lighten up as I move down until I get to that. So now you've gone in one stroke from this blue to this pink, which is really beautiful, okay? You can even do this with the other color magic brushes. You've got the 2K Magic 17, that's not a variant. Go to the brush settings, remember what I showed you? Go ahead and increase the minimum for the opacity right there. Go ahead and increase for the flow, okay? And here we go, heavy pressure, light pressure, and back to heavy, all in one stroke. This really opens up some interesting possibilities for watercolor emulation in Photoshop, doesn't it? Look at this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. All with the same brush, now back to blue and everything in between, right? Give this a try, folks, it's really, really fun. And naturally, you still can use all the same tools as before. You wanna use your smudge tool, you wanna mess around with the edges, go for it. Look at that, nice soft edge right there. And then maybe pop over here to, um, Let's see, something like maybe, I think there's a stain brush in here that's really fun. Let's see, stain damp paper. There it is, I love this one. Make it a little bigger, like 250 pixels, and just do something like that. Go ahead and set the blend mode to multiply, try that. Oof, look how pretty that is. All this stuff looks like great natural media effects, happy accidents, all the other good things you can do with watercolors. Grab the streaker brush. Throw some more color in there. Grab your smudge tool. Come on down and use the spider spread blend brush right there. And look at that. 
really nifty. So this is what you do. You play around with the brushes, with the blenders, with everything together, and you get these amazing effects. Now, if you want to have a uniform paper texture under everything or whatever, you can add a piece of paper that you've scanned. You can add a paper texture that you purchased, whatever you like, and you just place that paper over on a separate layer, your painting, and then you can use blend modes. So as an example, I can go here to edit and then fill, and I'll use one of my watercolor paper textures. This one, for example, is, let's see, this is the paper pulpy. I'll say, okay, just throw that on there like this. Now, the moment I set that to something like soft light, look what that does. Adds a beautiful texture. The white areas remain empty, okay, but the areas that are painted get that texture on top. If I bring up my curves, control M, command M, all right, I can start to play with things like the darkness and the lightness of that, the intensity of the texture, right? I'm just doing things to modify the darks and lights. Now let's go ahead and hide that for a moment and then bring it back. And you can see what that does. Hide it, bring it back. Adds a whole other nice level of believability, texture, natural um, quality to it, if you will, just by using the paper, okay? So hopefully, if you've observed everything that I've just shown you with what you can do with the brushes, with the smudge tool, with the eraser, and with the add paper texture brush, with the foreground background color being painted at the same time using the color magic brushes, you can see how something like this would be arrived at very easily, okay? Painting a solid shape like the shirt all in one go, right? I just grab any old brush, I look at that, and I say, okay, cool, I want to paint that shape. And we just do it. There we go. Paint the shape, paint the shape, paint the shape. Paint over it, paint over it, add some texture, and then carry on. So there you go, folks. Watercolor emulation in Photoshop. This is something that anybody can do. And I really want to see what you all make with it. Please go ahead and hit me up on Twitter or Instagram and show me the work that you create with these brushes. And uh, have fun with it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out. Ciao for now.